So hi everyone and welcome to the uh, March 3rd Diversity and Inclusion Working Group. Um, I will put the minutes back in the chat. All right, so if you could add yourself to the minutes, that would be great. I'll also share my screen just as we kind of move through things here. So let's see, share my screen. All right. So the agenda for today is just a kind of a, a few things. Mm, puppies, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, no doubt, that's totally my thing. <laughs> Um, so this is the last week. So just if you didn't know, you know, we're doing, we do the metrics releases twice a year. And uh, this is the last week for kind of comment period is over, but this is the working groups week to kind of wrap up any comments. All right. Hi, Justin. So I'll put the chat back in the minutes. You mean the meetings back in the chat? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, have a cookie. I, <laughs> so the first, uh, so a couple, so again, we just have a, a few comments that we have to take care of. Um, on issue 328, let's see. Um, this was with respect to chat platform inclusivity. I think Ray had made a comment. So we had had a pretty good discussion through here and Ray had one final comment on a PR. He still needs his DCO stuff. Um, but if you take a look, he's just simply making the suggestion of a small wording change, number of active chat platforms to number of active chat rooms. Um, it seemed like a totally fine change to me so I can, I'll get that merged. Hang on, let me read number of back. Very active chats can be difficult to follow and difficult to will vary from person to person, general number of active chat. I'm almost saying you could have chat platforms and chat rooms, <laughs> to okay. be honest with you. Well, okay. So the first one had it. Yeah. Yeah. So I will yeah, I would leave platform in there and maybe add chat to the rooms. So it's not just rooms. The reason why I gotcha. say that is like CNCF has how many different different Slacks? There's the Kubernetes Slack, there's the CNCF Slack, there's Linux Foundation Slack probably. So that's why I like okay. keeping platforms there. But then chat rooms, just but, a little more But explicit. yeah, then there's multiple rooms within the different platforms. Okay. So that, that would be my recommendation. I, that's pretty easy to take care of. I'll see if raises, if that kind of satisfies what raise talking about too, he's quick to respond. So I just jotted that down. I'm not gonna do it right now, just cause okay. the meeting, but okay, cool. Um, great, thank you. Um, so actually change to chat platforms slash chat rooms, right? Yeah. Uh, the suggestion. Yeah, and we're saying groups like in Google Groups? I'm I think so. Okay. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, the next one is right here, 321, I think. Yep. This was documentation accessibility. Again, fairly long conversation. There was one merged update. Um, from a couple weeks ago. So I honestly, I think this metric is good. So we added just a bit more. Um, let's see if we can find it. We had added just a bit more to some of the 
interview questions. You can't go wrong with more. It was it it was a pretty low overhead addition, and I think it um, worked for me. So this one's been merged, and I honestly think this is merged and ready to go. And then three nineteen. Maybe that's this one. Oh yeah, so we've had fairly long conversation about project burnout. Um, Lawrence had some suggestions about how to modify the questions that were in Project Burnout. I think really what we ultimately decided, and if I went back through the minutes from the last maybe two weeks ago, that we're just going to go ahead and release Project Burnout as is, that as a community, we were pretty happy with it, and then start taking on Lawrence's comments, because they're pretty significant changes um, as to whether or not this would constitute a new metric or how we can incorporate these effectively in project burnout. So it was, it was kind of wrapped up into a series of fairly large PRs that I think we're going to kind of hold off on. So version two, if we include it there or a new metric. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So I think this one is done. Um, a comments to uh, P2 in the future or maybe and or new metrics. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Um, so as we wrap this up for this release, Kevin and Georg are gonna handle the release. Um, so there's nothing that needs to be uh, done. So Justin, you have a comment here. You're muted. I don't know if you wanna talk or if you want me just to read the, if you stay muted for a couple seconds, I'll just read it. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, hi. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. Hey. So yeah, this was just, uh, I, I, I missed some of the context there just around the renaming the metric name around groups. Not that uh, the name really matters, but just, I do want to just point out that this metric was focused thinking more about synchronous communication or real-time communication so like instant messaging platforms or um, chat, like chat room type platforms, really trying to emphasize the synchronous aspect. Something like Google groups, I would group together with mailing lists, web forums, um, you know, similar things. But I, I think that we would need to look at it through a different metric than this one for that asynchronous. Okay, piece. so you're saying that, remove that groups from there totally. Yeah, I just I I'm I'm not sure if if that we like I, I know naming this one was really difficult, but whatever makes sense to communicate synchronous communication channels, I think that was really the spirit of of this metric. Matt, can you bring that back up? Yeah, the PR. The PR, just because yeah. it had the name and everything on it. So you're not talking about there, Justin, you're talking farther up? Or are you still talking that one line we were just changing? Oh, okay. No, I, I see this change now. This, this is this is fine. Okay. Um, I, just, I thought it was about the, the metric name. Um, maybe I missed that context, sorry. Yeah, metric name is not changing. Okay, sweet. Got it. So then keep groups. It, this change makes sense to me, yep. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, all right. One, moving on. Uh, one of the things that, and I can just put this as an action item, even just for myself or unless somebody wanted to pick it up. One of the things that we like to do is as we release metrics, Right, obviously they go on the chaos main page. They get updated here in, am I looking, oh, it's common, but they get updated here in the spreadsheet. So for example, right now these are under community review and once they're released, they'll turn green and they go to release because we just like to track the work that we're doing. Um, but in addition, it's just, 
also making sure that we have our focus areas that are in line with these focus areas that are in line with the chaos metrics page focus areas. So I, I don't think they're out of line at the moment, but if I take a look at, um, let's see, these are under project and community. If I look at project and community, just making sure that the list of metrics that we are releasing as on the chaos website is the same as what we have in the spreadsheet is the same as what we have in the repo. Does that make sense? I just need to make sure all of these things are aligned. Um, so that's just an action item for myself. <laughs> I'll give it to me. Repo, website, and spreadsheet. Like I said, I think things are pretty good, but I just need to really make sure that they are. So I just want to bring that forward. Um, all right. So one of the things that we've been, kind of the next thing here, one of the things that we've been talking about is with, res with respect to the chaos DNI reflection that we're doing. And I just wanted to, to know if anybody on the call today has thoughts about ways that we can share the final results. And so there's gonna be a group of people, right? Kind of helping with this reflection, but do we have thoughts that we could maybe provide as, as suggestions or examples as a way for, um, the work that's done at the end of say, you know, six to nine months is presented to the chaos community and then is made available to other projects. Does that make sense? Like, I mean, the, the most sensible thing, right? For example, is a P, just put it in a PDF and just publish a PDF that says, here's the things that maybe the chaos project could do to improve uh, their own diversity and inclusion within the project. Tractable to other projects, we could make this PDF available. <laughs> you know, make so either those are really low bar examples. <laughs> are there things that people could could brainstorm right now that wouldn't necessarily be what happens, but it could be something that we provide as suggestions. I mean, I know chaos con would specifically be people interested in chaos. Mm -hmm. So what about hitting up like open source summit and some of the more open topic um, conferences? Okay. So like maybe like for the internal making a presentation at chaos con, but for external like this. It's so great mean great <clears throat> great minds think alike because I was gonna um, I was thinking along the same lines. So is this we receive a um, you know so we're going through now, okay, how inclusive are are we as as a group? And, and so we we're looking at ourselves and, um, and then I'm thinking, okay, we, we get this report or we get this, this, uh, uh, reflection and then it's, um, talking about what we found and what we did about it. And then presenting that out yeah and that's exactly where my head went Pre that that becomes a presentation that we can share at conferences in terms of how other communities can use the information here's how we used 
the information. Here's how you might use the information. And OSSNA is canceled, but EU is still being planned for end of September in Dublin. Um, they decide just to focus on one thing. Um, but even how we use stuff, you know, maybe PyCon is open to, you know, stuff that's not necessarily Python. So we can definitely look for conferences that are open to other things. I mean, we could even do this at open, open in front, to be honest with you. Um, so there has to be besides OS Open Source Summit that there has to be others that are open to wider topics um, because these things help them. So it's mainly just going through the CFPs and seeing those that are open to less technical type discussions. Okay. Good. Yeah. Who wrote the toolkit one? Was that you, Justin? Yeah, so just knowing that for the context behind that we're going to be going through our own process, going trying to audit our own community and see where we could improve, trying to create some kind of um, guide or toolkit that we could actually provide to other projects saying, here's how we did it. Here's how you can take this as like a template of running your own DNI audit for your own project. Here's where sample questions can be found. No, I love the idea. Exactly, plus one. Yeah. Justin, do you have an example that wouldn't be like a one-to-one -one example, but another toolkit example? It's not, ex it's not exactly in the DNI context, but other communities I've worked with, I've tried to create like uh, what I've called run books, which are kind of like community guide handbooks about how you do different roles in the community or um, like a collection of information. Uh, let me let me dig for that and I'll see if I can if I can okay. come back with something. It might be helpful even if it's not DNI just to like get the mind in the right space. That's all. Yeah, because I don't think what we did with OpenStack is <laughs> We looked at the older one, then we found new questions we like and we created it and then we sent it out and went, I mean, yeah, it's repeatable, but it started with stuff that already existed. It's our okay. lazy flow, not something you wanna share besides with friends. <laughs> what would people think about um, thinking bigger? Sorry, Doug's. So um, part of this, what I wrote here was like training or grants where the chaos project, we would have to have some support behind this, but where the chaos project is actually also active in providing support for other projects so that they could attend a, a training session that we run where we specifically kind of like the presentations where we talk through um, what our audit was and maybe to Justin's point like how to approach a toolkit and you know what might be in order of events or um, the toolkit I think and how to run through it could also be a presentation um, okay. and a training so we could okay um, and my, my thought is also that if someone's going to a conference, that's something we could offer the organizers. If they provide a room, we'll go ahead and run through this. That's great. Yeah. If someone's already going to be there, why not offer it? Um, and that way the companies that are, we work for that are sponsoring our travel are then sponsoring the training in a way. And if we can get them a Hey, sponsored by so and so and so and so from so and so, um, you know, because we're already there. Why not? Um, and that's a little easier than maybe finding people to pay for other people to show up at a training. Yep. Um, so I put 
workshops? Is that kind of what you were thinking? Yes. Yeah, so, and then mentoring okay. we would do anyways, which may be the training you're talking about. I think it's a way of getting around grants because our companies are already sending us someplace and we're going to offer this. So I think in theory, even if we chaos had to pay for a room somewhere would still be cheaper than sending people somewhere. Agreed. I think that's a good point. Okay. Data detox kit. I like the name. Okay. Um, any other ideas? This is super helpful. Thank you, everybody. I want to click on this. I like the name. <laughs> You're yeah. just drawn to the name, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is great stuff. Squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah. If you haven't noticed. That one was cool, too. It was actually from, I got that from MozFest. They had it. There was a booth uh, like two or three years ago. And they just had like, it was like a actual, like a, a handbook, like a printed guide that you took from their booth and you had different cards. I just thought it was a very interactive way. It was like eight steps. And it was like, go through these steps to help take control of your data, data um, footprint on your online services. And I just like, I loved the format from it. So that's why I put it there. I like it. All right. Thank you for sharing. Thank you everybody for your, Here's your, your own adventure. So I think there's going to be an opportunity for us to not only improve the practices for chaos, but to really help, you know, kind of be that force for good to help other projects do the same. All right. Um, any other comments on this? This is a, a long arc, so we'll have this discussion <laughs> many, many times. So this is great to start capturing these thoughts. Um, just an update on badging. We did get a new submission this morning from a conference called Berlin Buzzwords, which I'd never heard of. Has anybody heard of that? No. It's on, it, yeah, I hadn't either. It's on data. I saw that Leslie Hawthorne is part of the program committee. Oh, okay. Yep. But she's in Germany. That makes sense. So, um, so it's great. This is our seventh project going through the badging program and the sixth honestly, since like the start of 2021. So this is getting some really nice traction, um, which is really cool. Um, there was just a, not that it really has an impact on people here, but there was a little bit of a rendering problem with the, you know how we hand out the badges, like the gold, silver, or passing badges, the image itself um, was having some trouble being rendered. So we're fixing that. I don't know much about graphics. <laughs> so I was told by somebody who does know something about graphics that it needed a little bit of work. So we're, we're learning on the fly. Um, and I think we have, um, um, Elizabeth has been doing a lot of work with respect to outreach to identify new reviewers. And Matt has been, uh, go, Matt Snell has been going through the process of onboarding uh, new reviewers. I, I will just say, just so people know, I went through the Berlin Buzzwords uh, conference this morning. I'm one of the reviewers on it. It probably took me, it's so, so interesting. It probably took me 15 minutes. It's, it's really just questions about, are they demonstrating their code of conduct? Do they talk about how, if there's a violation in terms of the review, like, you know, what a person can do? Um, do they have diversity access tickets? It could be that, that they had done so well in presenting the information, it was super easy to find. Um, but reviewing it, it was just really great. So if you have an interest, don't hesitate to let me know, or Matt or Elizabeth. And Anita, I know that you also do reviews, so thank you so much for your support. All right, um, the last thing, and maybe I'll just kind of leave it at this, but as we think about new metrics going forward, I was trying to think, look through the list of metrics in DNI, and I was kind of asking myself what, I feel like we've been going through some fairly complex DNI metrics, and I know complexity, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should shy away from something, 
but I was trying to think of something that might be, <laughs> it won't be like one metric that breaks into three metrics, which was how documentation turned out and it ended up being fairly complicated. Um, so I was thinking maybe the onboarding metric might be one that is, I think fairly easy, I say this, fairly easy to, <laughs> to, to approach. Um, we could think about onboarding, not only from a project perspective, you know, like what you're doing as a project to help onboard new contributors. But I even think that we could consider onboarding from a, a conference perspective. You know, what is a conference doing to help onboard participants to the conference, particularly in uh, the light of virtual conferences? I don't know what people's thoughts are on maybe exploring the onboarding metric. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I've been helping out with DevConf and they'll assign me a couple people, you know, for US and for CZ. And it was nice to meet with them and just, you know, explain to them what they should be looking for. And I think once we get back, hopefully to in person, I think that will be more important, like stressing hall hallway track over everything else. I mean, mm -hmm because they're going to ma make their schedule and that's what they're going to focus on. And it's that is not as important virtually because while places are having hallway track rooms, there's very little going on. Um, but yeah, that's a great place. Onboarding at the conference, onboarding into the project. So I think that's a good next target. And if we're careful, it won't turn into multiples. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do here. So um so amy you had mentioned with events what were your what coaching were a few... mentoring not just for the speakers but attendees so it's your first conference like my first OpenStack one we had something we called friendly faces so you can meet some other people just so if you wanted to go somewhere alone you knew someone else at the conference and you didn't necessarily have to go alone it can be okay. anything from how do i pick what I want to go see, the importance of hallway track, and so on. Okay. Yeah, yes, I sure. thought <clears throat> open, the OpenStack conferences always did such a great job with, the, they had so many, <clears throat> they had so many different things that you could participate in. Um, the, it, gosh, they had the breakfast, they had the panel discussion they had the gosh they had so many different things that that got um newcomers involved in the conference they did and, such a great job yeah and linux yeah. foundation goes kind of a tour of the city um morning yoga you know stuff that's inviting you know and gets people get, gives you the opportunity to meet someone else um okay. mm -hmm. yeah I'm jotting everything down. Justin, you had a comment or a question? Yeah, so I'm looking at the, the spreadsheet again, and I'm noticing mm -hmm. that we have the um, onboarding metric underneath the leadership bucket. But at yeah, the top, could... we also have that first one on event diversity. Mm -hmm. To me, when I think of onboarding, like, and I, I think what we've got here is actually some really great ideas around like actually like inclusive like inclusive behaviors at, at events, um, like around event culture almost. Mm -hmm. But I see onboarding in, in a different context, just in terms, and I think that might be a little bit more widely applicable as a way of how do you, as, as a project, lead in a way where you can bring new people in and onboard them into your community. Um, whether you've a, a long-term, like a project that's been around for decades and you have cultures that have been built up in that time period that you need to translate or if you're um, even a new project and you're just trying to figure out how other people can can get involved or, or be a participant in your work like that's what I see a lot of is teams that are like you know we're excited we want we have our we have our open source project that we're launching how do we bring new people in we're ready to help them like how do we do that so when I think of onboarding, those are the contexts that I normally think about it in. So maybe just to avoid the rabbit hole of creating like a huge, like a huge new metric, maybe we should scope whether we want to focus this on the events piece and maybe group, maybe create a new metric under event diversity to capture some of this. 
-hmm. or if we want to split it off into like project onboarding, um, bringing it back under the leadership bucket. As yeah, I, I could see it going both I ways. I like that idea because Over. they're two totally different things. Onboarding onto a project and onboarding, just welcoming people at events, which is more inclusivity if you think about it. Okay. Um, I think that's great. So I, <laughs> no, 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 this is, you know, we have, um, we have code of conduct as code of conduct for a project and code of conduct for an event as two different metrics. Yeah. And so I think what I'm hearing is possibly these are two different metrics. Yes. And the way that we think about onboarding at events is very different than the way we think about it at projects. Is that right? Yeah, because the cool. onboarding at events may just be inclusivity versus and then, onboarding. And then this row 45 is just <laughs> how it got. It doesn't really matter how it got there all these years ago, but this could just be then placed into the two different focus areas. Okay. All right, cool. I will also take on that. To create. Okay. Good. Anything else from people? We made it to the end. This is great. Um, just one thing back on track to other projects. Do we want yes. to put in a proposal for OSSEU? Being that that's coming up and the CFP is open. Is it due? Does it, or do you have it open to in see June. when it's due? In June. June. Okay. Um, hang on. I'll get the link because I have it open. I don't think it's a, uh, I, oh, yeah, Nicole. I mean, I don't know if we're going to be ready in time. I, sorry, Ben can sit um, next to me. Um, I, I, I would, uh, I would like to, um, particularly around um, the, uh, the badging program. Um, I think there's a lot of good things to, I think, I think we could actually put in a couple of different um, yeah. sessions. I, it just the badging uh, comes to mind for me. We've, we're seeing some good, good uh, progress and traction there. Um, cool. Yeah. I and think maybe yeah, we could I, get them to submit for a badge. That would it would be good outreach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this is my concern. This is why we need reviewers. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, I should put my name in the hat for that, huh? For the, for the badging one. Yeah, I, I'm happy to write it. Um, and then, but I'm also thinking um, that um, for the uh, that I haven't told Matt. Um, I haven't spoken up and said, "Hey, I'll I'll be on the reviewer team," but I I should do that. Yeah. I'm just note to self. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's so helpful and so productive. I, All right, we'll reach out to Matt. We'll add yay. one more. <laughs> but yeah, I plan on trying to get. Even though it's a bad week for me, I plan on trying to get to Dublin because I've never been. So yeah, I'll work on whatever we need to. Yeah. yeah. Provided we're allowed and, to travel. It's going to be a bummer if we have to do it remotely. Well, I'll tell you too, Amy and Nicole, I've been working with Matt. So like if, if, it, if you do get assigned a review and it just like the timing is just very poor, just say something and we can reassign reviewers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're like, no, this I week mean, is just... it probably doesn't take more than an hour. Even it's a really big one. It's no. It can't be worse than doing code reviews. No, it's not. <laughs> I just suck at GitHub is the problem. I like Garrett so much better. Actually, this is so um, this is so ordered just in terms of the check boxes that are set up for the review process. It's all handled in just an issue. And everything that that needs to be done is is set up in check boxes. 
in that issue. So Matt and Asta, when they set this up, really did a fantastic job. Oh, cool. Making it really easy to do the review. All right. Um, I also do, I like the idea of the badging submission to OSSEU, and I, I do like the idea, and Justin, maybe you and I can talk about this, about OSSEU from the reflection. Like, it would, it would really just be like, here's what we're doing. <laughs> like, it would be more of a, here's what's coming, you know, and that may be interesting as well. Makes sense. Who we are. Yeah. What we do. What did, um, what about an idea? This just total brainstorm idea. Um, a panel discussion where it does it does strikes at the heart of who we are, what we do, but in kind of a panel discussion where you've got different folks from the different working groups who then talk about the different things that they're uh, working on, and then you've got a moderator who can go through and. And, and, and each, each one of these folks gets to talk about uh, what the, their working group, you know, where the different working groups uh, is, is doing. And then the audience gets to ask questions of, you know, name your favorite working group. Oh, that, would that be, that's kind of a large. Top, Matt. Oh, but like, I think. Nicole, were you talking about with respect to the DNI reflection or just the chaos project as a whole? Oh, that's true. Um, I was actually, so I, I think there are two, I think we, I think there are two different ones. I think mm -hmm. the, the reflection would, would be one um, for sure. Uh, and then another one where you get to basically meet the chaos project. Right. And it's actually a panel discussion with basically the different working groups. Um, and yep. you've got one person from each of the different working groups. So what is that, five or six or? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they can talk about the different work, so kind of give you the latest on the different work that's happening in those different working groups. And then you have the audience who can ask different questions of, so now in the risk group or in the value group or in the yeah. evolution group or. I think so. who will be able to travel will help us control the number of people because usually working group um, panels aren't six people. But at the same time, with COVID and everything else, we may actually be able to self-limit us ourselves by who can actually get there if it's live. And if it's not live, I know with um, Open Infra, I asked if it was okay if I had more panelists and because it was virtual and it didn't revolve passes or anything, that wasn't a problem. Um, so... I think we'll be okay on numbers either through self-regulation of travel and the ability to expand it a little bit for virtual. Cool. Um, okay, so we're at the end of time and Nicole, I'm gonna bring this to the community call. Okay. So, so I think that's a good spot to talk about this. And it's great to see everybody. And thank you so much for your very thoughtful comments. Look at this. This is amazing. Really great, really great discussion today. Um, so yeah. take care. And I will you see too. all of you around at different places on the internet. Take Absolutely. Care. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to look into the legato <laughs> dog. <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah. I know that. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye. -bye.